Ten seconds remain. LGBTs turn to ban. OGs turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. At least again, there's still plenty more action going on the night on the mainstream. But the final game that we should be covering on this stream here, we got OG versus LGD Gaming in this best of one in the round robin stage. So I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Z Rock here once again. Really excited to be here. Uh, personally, I, I really have never, I, I honestly was thinking about it. I don't think I've actually gotten the chance to cast OG before. So that's a, that's a plus for me and a, and a biased personal side, at least. So. I actually don't know if I've done one of their games either. I'm super excited for this game, though, because LGD, a team that I thought was probably the most likely one to get out of the China qualifiers, and they did just barely squeak through. And OG has had a lot of question marks around them. They've kind of underperformed this patch, and definitely curious to see what they're going to bring. So I think this will be a very good matchup just to kind of get a preview of what we may see at TI. I'm not looking too much into this event. Honestly, OG for me can go winless in the group stages, and I still have them as favorite for TI7. Um, this is a the team that's... Favorite? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They, they are my favorite 100% going into TI7. Oh. No questions asked. I mean, th this is a team that's won both the majors throughout this year, and they've proven time and time again on the main stage, and the, when it really matters, they come to play. In the first game, they drafted Ark Warden. They did the same thing at the group stages of PF. Yeah, let's not forget that. And it failed horribly. I think they went like 0-3 with the hero, yet they won it in the end. They didn't really end run Ark Warden after that. But I feel like they like to kind of try these things in an event like this. Yeah, and I think with the new balance patch we just saw, they're going to be testing some more things for sure. But it's an EG year, man. It's just, it's going to be their year. They're looking super sharp. It is an odd numbered year, which means North America <laughs> has to win. Yeah. Well, not, not China has to win. Oh, yeah. That's a better way to put it. So, well, but. we'll have to see. We do see them get the Night Stalker, which was banned out in the first two or three games that we did cast. So that will mm -hmm. be slipping through. This Faceless Void has been getting picked up a lot or banned. It's it's seen a lot of pick priority. And Seven, definitely curious to see how LGD is planning on using this. In the chat scene, yeah. The the one time the it got picked up on our first match by I was a newbie, I want to say. It got banned in the next bad by, by, you know, against a Chinese team, and now here we are having it by the Chinese team in LGD Gaming. So it seems like, especially in that region, this is a very relevant hero. And as we saw earlier, it was in uh, that one position. A hero that definitely could play across the board, offline as well, even suggested possibly a mid in the case of the first game. So I will say, if this hero comes back into the meta, it's super good for EG's chances at TI. Because Universe is like the most known Void player in the game. Mm -hmm. And if it can be ran as a carry, but could be flexed to the offlane, that's another hero you pretty much have to first ban against anyone that can play it in the offlane. Yeah. But let's see what OG is going to do here. I'm really curious to see if we see an Alchemist this game. <laughs> I think he got enough of the sweet spot with the buffs that he's going to at least see some play from OG. And this is about the perfect testing grounds. These are better than scrims at the very least. These are games they are going to actually try in. There's some money on the line. So definitely excited to see what they want to test on the field of battle here. Absolutely. So, of course, when this late back in 7.06E, I want to say, uh, days ago even, that's what people were calling it. The OG winning path of anything because of Alchemist, mm -hmm. as you just pointed out, getting that button there. So, um... We'll see. We'll see if Alchemist is picked up. I mean, I I don't know. The hero literally got picked one time in all the region qualifiers. Like the hero just went complete crap tier in the latest patch. Now, were these buffs really enough to all of a sudden be like, okay, yeah, we could start picking now again for OG because they have the history. I think that you are right that we could exactly. see from that, but I'm not expecting it to you know just start taking off again by any means. No, I, I agree. It'll be one of those things I could see them playing a game or two here. And then 
practicing with it, busting it out in group stage of TI. It does super well, and then teams maybe pick it up in the in the playoff stage. I don't expect it's going to go tier one overnight, but the agility buff is actually pretty major to him. It it smooths out his attack animation a lot, and the biggest thing is it gives him some starting armor finally. Yeah. He had so little. Ten but. seconds remaining. I just want to see, right now their opening is fairly aggressive. We've got a Batrider and a Night Stalker, two very solid run at you heroes. The LGDs, on the other hand, extremely defensive in the early game. Torrent's a super good disengage tool. Chronosphere is just awesome to dump stuff into later. Awesome. Uh, it kind of fit OG. Yeah. I like Rasta in really fast-paced lineups. I, I think it's super good. They ran a winter from the first game. Uh, you could argue that if to save somebody in a chronosphere, if anything. But that seems maybe more on the defensive side, of course. That hero is just so hard to use effectively right now. It used I to like be that it. W was just such good wave clear that you could just pick him and stall for days with, at the very least, the shards. But that got nerfed. And he got buffed this patch, but it's fun to watch. I just don't know if, if it'll really see play. Park Warden is still an option, and, and honestly, I, I would I'll be surprised again. They they ran against nice. EG earlier. We saw it in Kiev in the group. This is yeah. OG. I'm just really curious to see where they lane this. Some people theory crafted mid visage at the pro level. Some people did play it as a carry. Um, I would guess it's going to be R5. Well, we've seen it flexed around a little bit here and there. Yeah, it's kind of setting up for a weird draw draft. The the potential is definitely there. You've got your front line in the Night Stalker. You've got two decent ranged heroes that can kind of bully their lane. We've seen this combo a little bit, I feel like. AA is kind of taken off in the China scene, and I don't know what is it, a secret, I believe, is a little bit. I know Alliance is running in their qualifier run there. We're seeing some teams kind of pay more attention to AA as a support that you don't necessarily need only to counter heals, right? Like, you look at this Radiant, or OG side even, they don't have really any heals, but AA still is bringing into to the table with this pat, not the pass of the, uh, the Chilling Touch, as well as even the Ice Protex. Mm -hmm. on top of that. And just a super obvious combination with the Kunkka and the, the Faceless Voids. Just more stuff to dump into a Chronosphere, or to just set up for an X person to uh, get exploded when they get pulled back. So, yeah, it's, I mean, there's two phases to AA. Does he win the lane because of Chilling Touch, and then how much effectiveness does the ult kind of give you? Five seconds, really? I, I think it looks good here. They've got the framework to make it a solid AA game. Uh, look to see them pick up another ranged hero, though, that'll actually pair well with the Chilling Touch to, to uh, make the lane a little better, I would guess. Unless it's going to be offline void. That's still, and that, that's why an earlier on faceless void pick is good because again he does bring that presence of he can still transition in the offlane even if that wasn't the plan from the beginning. They feel that's necessary. So, Ember Spirit in four position for OG, so it's going to be an Anna Ember Spirit. So no Alchemist, unfortunately, or Arcordon for that matter. I would have liked to see Arcordon as well for ourselves even, but get Ember Spirit. I mean, no tail spirit for them before. Oh, that's, that's actually true. You know what? He played in that game. Now that you mentioned that, he was actually the one playing it earlier. So I guess they still don't. could run the airport. To be fair, not the best heroes to eventually give eggs to. Visage gives him an extra bird. That's cool. Your Night Soccer should have an eggs by the time you're getting it for him. A Batrider's eggs is just more trolly than good. It's, it's fun, but just better stuff to go on him. Yeah. LGD is super all in on ults, though. You've got Ravage, Ice Blast, Chronosphere. Go ship and and LGD without them the team looks really lackluster. So they they're gonna have to set the pace of this game, be the ones choosing when they're taking fight, and OG's gonna have to just be trying to play around those cooldowns. Someone will die when LGD presses their buttons. You just want to make sure it's the least amount of heroes that can, and that you try to get something off the other side of the map. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a hero that's like good counter initiation because of all that team fight, but they, they banned a lot of value. We see the fans are first banned by uh, the Earthshaker and Sneaking were banned at the beginning. So it's like, what options are left? And oh, he really needs a one position hero. Even. You could argue they could do a one position Ember Spear with a moon instead of here as well, but. I want to see him pick something that can split. Uh, I think you just avoid LGD. You pull them to other sides of the map. Ember's very good at shoving out lanes and keeping pressure up. Batrider can do that as well. I just want to see them run around the map like crazy. Naga Siren, that's one. Please, no. Please, Naga Siren. The viewers want it. I would rather carry Nature's Profit or something over a Naga Siren. <laughs>
God, what is this? I just saw, I saw somebody say that, that OG doesn't have a top five player at any position. What the? What, what are you smoking, bro? This is why you just don't read chat. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> seconds remaining. At the very Wait, least, majors. I would argue Jerax is probably one of the best players in the game right now. Oh yeah, Fly. That's the bad support. I think yeah. he deserves respect there. Ana's getting over his nerves. He's put up some good showings at, at lands. You know, his very first land showing is a little rough, but you can't take somebody that's won this many tournaments and say they have no top fives. All right, so we have a mid Mirana, I would assume, out of LGD. That's that's going to be interesting, because we've seen two different Mirana builds lately. Some people still going the old school Ags. That's a Meepo. Is it a good Meepo, though? We're done talking. This is a this is a Meepo game. I see. It's gonna be a no tell Meepo, and I know he has history, man. But see, Meepo pick Meepo, man. Oh, this is gonna be great. So for LGD though, they have a lot of AOE for the Meepo. That, that does good to start, but who closes out on the Meepo? Like, no tail's probably good enough at this to keep most of his Meepos away. And if you're committing a chrono every time to kill the Meepo and Ana's splitting you somewhere across the map, I actually love this. If Notel gets fairly early boots of travel, he could overextend LGD and just make them move too much. Huh. I, I don't think he has to have a huge blowout game. I really don't. No. He's just got to farm everywhere and, and just try to jerk LGD to, to three lanes at once. Yeah. It's... The, the team fight is... I mean, that's... It's going to be the, the, the tool here for LG in this game. They, they need to land these big team fights is the biggest thing. You know, catch at least one of the meepos, if not multiple, in the Chronosphere. Follow up, obviously, with uh, what they have here, the ALT and etc. Yeah. A lot just of farm to go down, is, Just catching one is dangerous. Then he just poofs the other four on you. You take a ton of damage. True. But it, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm super excited to see how he plays this out. <laughs> Spam begin. All right, here we go, guys. So we're gonna introduce uh, the sides now on the radiant side. Of course, we have OG Fly on the Visage, Anna playing the Ember Spirit, Jerax on the Night Stalker, S4 playing the Pet Rider, and of course, No Tail on the signature hero Mevo. Always fun. And over on LGD side, we got Yao on Ancient Apparition, Victoria on Kunkka, Somnus on Marana, Amy on Void, and Old Eleven now just Eleven on Tide Hunter. That's right. I, I heard people mentioning that old 11, and I, I, I thought about that too, but yeah, he tagged himself up just 11 right here. I think it was right after DK disbanded a couple years okay. back. The old chicken, old 11, all of them changed their name to old. Gotcha. Oh, S4. Torrent? That's gonna maybe not really connect. He's good. Even if that connect, I don't. Well, I mean, they have cold feet, but I don't think they were gonna be able to get that go off, so. Is 11 really hidden here? I don't think they know it's here. He's very cool. It's gonna be playing. And we'll see what they're able to do against that. But Visage in the hands of the fly. Why? So why Visage here? Well, what does Visage bring to the table as the support option? I mean... It's push power similar to the way Arasta does. Honestly, not much more than that. I... I'm ha struggling to find a reason to pick this over the Shadow Shaman, other than the fact that the birds are more mobile than words. They can they can mm -hmm. farm a lane, they can provide a little more pressure. Look at Tide Hunter cracking power, he leveled up, of course, with rare protection, so they're definitely not killing him. It's just a matter of how much can they harass it right here as he's pulling the three point. Yeah, and a 46 base damage Meepo is going to struggle to farm under tower. No hatchet. Uh, and he blocks both camps. He stood in one, he had the ward in the other. What a monster. 11 doing work. That's 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 big. That's that's gonna really hurt OG early on. S4 in a bit of trouble here. Oh, yeah, I'm playing S4. Torrent connects and it'll be fine though, keeping the distance. That's the bottom lane. 11 is all the way to the tier 2 tower. And they're still chasing. They're pissed off, man. They do not want to get away free here. There's very little risk for OG to be here right now. And if they can deny a few of these out from Titan, it stops them from getting close to level 2. So they just want to give him some contest on his farm and deny these out so no tail can get the actual creeps. Knowing start indeed though, but the top lane. M2 is out, ladies and gentlemen. Apologize there. S4 goes down though. We saw the pressure earlier. It did feel like it was just a matter of time. 
Yeah, it's Boy, all the connected. Down. It's showing so much of where S Force trying to juke for torrents. And they connected with a, a torn in uh, cold feet there. Once he froze, he was just dead. So Marauder versus Ember Spear. They, they didn't last pick that Marauder. Obviously, we're so caught up with me, though. But how does Marauder fare in this game? You know, how in the matchup especially, you think? I mean, entirely depends on the build she goes. I I don't want to see the Ags build. I don't think it's probably that great, this game. I'd like to see the Aquila Maelstrom, like, farming carry style Marauder. It does a lot of damage now with the talent changes. But it's a little rough, honestly, into Ember. If Ember gets a little bit of a lead on her, he can just run at her with Flame Guard. There's not an easy way to strip it off. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. S4, just, they're just going to continue to pass the hell out of it, man. He, he, he was living life on thin ice right there. As it barely died to the AA auto attacking him, but he did the math. He popped the sal, but he's still not in the best of spots right here. And in fact, he's kind of juke though. Uh, well positioned right there by S4. He just runs right out through the trees, and they did not see him. So, a low torrent. It's gonna connect, and now he's in trouble. Cold feet goes up. He's dead. Yeah, yeah this is rough for him. He he can't even stay in this lane. Before Kunky even has X, he's spiking every torrent. Bottom lane, tight under. Cracking shells. Are they really killing him here? I don't know. Poof on in from Nothell. That's the second people with him. And they're gonna trap him. Another void. This should be a kill, actually. Yep. The last hit. No tail, but. Uh, he's trying to set that up for no tail, if anything, but yeah. Not the case. Still, get the kill. That's what matters. Finally, take out this pesky tide hunter. That's a hard kill to bring down. They're going to be very happy to take the tide hunter away from the lane for a little while. <clears throat> so, Murano. Double Wraith Ban build and. Creep farm early on, 20 and 6. 20 and 4 though for Ember Spirit, yeah. But just find himself. Oh, S4, it's on Tummy's in trouble again. X marks the spot, the torrent. Cold feet is up. That's gonna stuff in place. Now they didn't stagger the best though, so he's actually gonna look through this. And he gets his creeps. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty solid in the end. And they're out of XP range for Kunkka. Did it. Right. So at least he got something there, but man, it's a hard life for him. He's oh no! Here too. Oh, it's like he knows. Oh man! Oh no, he's not out of here just yet. Oh, the boots on the Kunkka, running him down. One more auto attack should do it. He's dead. No, nope, maybe not. Why, why do I say he's dead when he's not dead? He's definitely not dead. X marks the spot. It's gonna pull him back. One more needed. He got enough regen. Oh no! <laughs> the dukes are on the trees. Get it, Victoria. He's got. It's taking so much of S-Force time to do that, though. and all they're committing is their force support. Middle lane, speaking of force support, Jarek's coming in. Rana, she does not have leap up, she's gonna do some bottle charges, and it will be enough, and Night Stalker should be fine too, but... Oof, close calls, man. Yeah, this game's full of action already. How's Nota doing? Oh, that's what really matters. He's holding up. Five. He's near the top of the CS charts and getting to the point where Tide's gonna struggle to stay in lane. Kraken Shell, not very good against a whole bunch of poofs, and when you couple it with Void, very easy to stick on him. They're looking to set up in the mid lane though. LGD is smoked up. Is there an arrow? No, Mrana's porting in. Maybe a torrent. There's the X, the torrent. Is it gonna get maybe an arrow off? Slide a fist. He actually avoids the torrent and the arrow. The cold feet also doesn't go off, but the Star Storm is gonna do him in. I mean, he did the hell. He did everything he could to survive right there, but just not enough. Meanwhile, back to the bottom lane, tight under. Go for the TV. Do they have a stopper? It doesn't look like it. And despite all that burst coming out, he does survive. Without Night Stalker there. down here, the kill potential is almost zero. OG needs to be stacking more, though. Jarex is trying so hard to get this mid lane swinging in uh, on his favor, but hasn't been able to connect with anything yet, and it's kind of leaving No Tail without the huge jungle to farm that he plays. Yeah. And it's in trouble again. Cold feet's up. That's gonna slide a feet away from it though, so again, disjoints it here. Now he's going in for the kill, but this is so ambitious on his part. The cold feet up once again. He goes over the far end, secures a kill, and he takes off the cold feet as a result of it as well. Now Victoria torn on himself. Jarek's defeating. It is nighttime, obviously, so running a little bit faster. And he'll survive too. To. No tail. Look at this. The real Meepo's in. Nets on it and poofs on with the other. The poof did not connect for the damage though. They have an arcane rune, however. Another net coming out. The torrent's gonna stop at least one of the meepos, and it will be enough to keep them alive. On Marana, 
Close call there. Wow, this is just so action packed. <laughs> That's where we're dead again. Yeah, what else is here? Uh, that that okay. cost an ultimate. Yeah, three deaths, four deaths even for that Bat Rider. Ooh, four of the five deaths on him so far this game. Again, not a friendly game you talked about earlier. I mean, he really can't be at the top lane and He's crying, man. He's trying to be up there. Only has boots and a wind lace currently on. I'm trying to finish the tranquils. He's got a stacked camp here. At least that's something. As long as he doesn't get roamed on. Yeah. So Marana does have the axe queued up here, and I have seen a couple Marana games recently again going back to the qual for being that big event recently, where they didn't even get axe at all. Like they kind of just skipped it even. Yep, I agree. For the most part, people just didn't go axe. They went like Maelstrom, uh, Manta, just a lot of a lot of pushing and uh, right flick, especially with that leap talent at 25. The 100 leap attack speed makes you attack so fast. Yeah. Faceless Void going that Mask and Madness spell too. Takes up the top tower, the time lock to take off damage. Time dilation will also stop the sticky napalm spam from S4. Now S4 running into a bit of a trap. Cold feet, not gonna go off though. Keeps his distance. Bottom lane, no tail. He avoids the torrent. He'll walk away. He's building up that Dragon Lance, just about finished. So get an idea of what uh, no tail and Meepo is gonna be going for here. So he's level seven in about eight and a half minutes. I'm curious to see what the Void follows this Mask of Madness up with. To me, Bloodthorn is super valuable in this game. It can lock down one Meepo, it provides a bunch of damage amplification to actually help you bring one down, and all in all, just a pretty solid item against Ember Spirit and the Meepo there, so... If they're feeling good, that's what I'd like to see him go fairly early on in this game, just so he has a single target burst to finish one of those Meepos off. Yeah. Ooh, fly. He's fine, but... Tidehunter is keeping him busy. Tidehunter level 6, he's holding on to that point, by the way. With a Ravage, perhaps. Ravage uh, is somewhat costly on the mana side of things, level 50. And Night Stalker, he's hiding up here. Currently daytime, two and a half minutes until that nighttime. We have Chronosphere ready to go. Faceless Void, the Mask of Man is still finished. And we saw it in the earlier game as well, so become a new trend here. Or recycling, even. Although Ember Spirits, by himself up here at the top. Well, not by himself. It's nice off up here, too. They're going to dive onto the Ancient Apparition. Here come the TPs. Oh, they might kill it, but it could come in a cost. Not careful. It could the Chronosphere been used right here. Torn on top. That's a dead spirit. Maybe no way to fly to the last second with the remnant of Somnus on the chase. Amorana. A couple of auto attacks coming out from her. The Star Star and the Flame Guard saves a little bit of damage, but not enough in the end, and he does end up falling. That's nice. Dr. Man. TP's out. I can't believe he got to that remnant in the first place. That was so close, but they do manage to bring him down. It is fairly committal. Cost the number of heroes. It's just, can No-Till make up for the dying on his team, you know? He's, he's getting all this room to farm, he's getting all this space. He's just got to turn it into something. So the Chronosphere didn't initially get the kill, but a couple of Chronospheres that neck eventually got it. S4. Well, he avoids the arrow. Definitely dodging skills on his part to continue, but... <laughs> not so much, just uh, not the greatest coordination, but he goes down again. Yeah, make it death number five. Yeah, it's not a and friendly game for him. This is kind of the reason Batrider fell out of favor. You you can't farm jungle uncontested anymore. The fours are so on you and ready to just stick to you when you try to go farm. And so if you can't just fall back and recover to a blink like that, he doesn't do anything. Like, Lasso isn't that big of an impact until you get blink, so he's just really struggling to find relevance. What is manning up mid? <laughs> yeah, I was just noticing that too. Hey, ult is coming in. No, oh, no. If that connects, yeah, that's a dead Ember Spirit. That was... The balls and Anna was big right there, but he regrets it immediately. Well, and he had the kill too if he wanted it. Uh, he could have triple remnanted on pot and just blown her up. 
but then he wouldn't have had an escape. He thought he was going to be able to get out of that. Not so much. He goes down. Now I'm going to wait another 10 seconds before he gets back up. You have no meanwhile. He's going to have a top lane to set up a Kakanka. JR gets pulled back by the Xbox spot, though, and Corio will just keep on running. Has those arcane boots and nice uh, sustaining his mana there. Well, Meeple's, I mean, Meeple's not doing bad by any means, 4,600 net worth. Would you say he's having a successful game so far? Like, is this where they want him, or would they like him to be a little better off here? This is just level six now, so of course those fingers online and sending them over here at the bottom lane, but he's trying to run away as well himself. And there's that slow coming out with the ice vortex, the torrent lane. This is just taken out as a result. Marana finishing the job. Nice catch there, and this should be a bottom tier one tower push now. Top of that. Riptide's ready. Did that come to play right here? Meepo's even flashing in. Here comes some TPs. Expecting the Chronosphere goes off, though. Expect a Riptide right after. Hey, he'll cut top. Here comes. Yeah, the Riptide goes off. And Meepo will fall. And you know, keeping his distance. We're going to go back in. The Ghost, though, is able to avoid the stun. However, Faceless Void is running on top. And he remnants out to survive. But with Meepo dead, do you really want to be taking this if you're OG? Yeah, probably not. And I don't, I don't know what a Riptide is, but that Ravage... Ravage absolutely killed Meepo. Was I saying Riptide? I definitely oh, was, like wasn't five I? Five times, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it four dies to the Dire, somehow. I oh, know, Kanka is also getting blown up, and it goes back in and down. Those Kanka makes this void. Ulti from Rana kicking in a little bit right there. He's able to chase down Visage. Cannot get the Dash Brock, though, on Ember Spirit. So ETP's out in time, but now Night Stock. Oh, Ember Spirit coming back in, actually, with Remnant. So he's reset, looking to go. No, Delta comes in with the poofs, takes out AA with him. But now Delta on the run again. The stars come up and finish the job on him. And 11 is sitting in the midst of it, just pop that anchor smash. And the tanky presence that he is. We've got the mid wars, baby, coming at you. And is in trouble. He is going to send the last one back on Murata. Victoria's running back in, though, himself now. More TPs in the ghost ship coming through. Not enough run, though, to save Murata in that case. And face yeah, that void. Was, that was absolutely a defensive ghost ship, and it almost worked. Yeah, that's that was some chaos there in the middle of the 13 to 6 LGD lead now on top of that. The fact that no tail uh, no tail excuse me died a couple of times in that fight. Pretty costly because it goes back to you just mentioned right there. The network's gonna drop in. We're gonna time at the beginning of this game. Sure, it's been going okay, but you know, is okay gonna be enough for OG to come out on top of this game? You got him and the Ember both below the Marana and the Faceless Void at this point. Ember Spirit's gonna be going a Radiance. Meanwhile, is that the is that the best choice here? It's not our Maelstrom. He's got to be able to shovel lanes. Uh, they, they're still on the same page as I am about what their game plan is. They just got baited into a really long mid fight. They want to be splitting the lanes, they want to be farming everything, and making it so LGD can't stack as five and then get three or four kills. Yeah. So th that's the build he needs to go to actually get the split pressure. If he struggles to get to the relic, I would look to see it switch to a uh, maelstrom pretty quick. At the moment, I think it's fine to go for the ambitious radiance. Riptide aka Ravage is ready again. Chronosphere also ready on top of that. They're going to pick off eight, though, in the midst of this. There goes a Chronosphere. Only caught S4, though. And he's not really... Okay, he's dropping pretty quickly in the end. There comes the Ravage, and they do catch it as a result. Down he goes as well. They were able to pick off Faceless Void, at least in return, but now Fly's also trying to run away. As Marana of the Moonlight Shadows kicks in, once and Vintage is going to be pulled back torn to help finish the job onto him. Double kill coming out for the Mirage. So losing face of Void ultimately not the worst stage right there. No tell again, have to be a little bit careful about committing to these fights. Jerax is going to get picked off as well as the Ghost Ship, or in this case, the Ghost Shark comes through and take him out. These team fights, I mean, as expected, they're going in LGD's favor, right? Like, this is what Delano's made to do. Yeah, absolutely. 
and this is starting to look like a huge problem for OG. You can lose everyone except Ana and No Tail. That, that's okay, but you're losing one of those cores every time these engagements happen. And because of that, they're just getting their growth stunted so much. That whole time No Tail was farming, but Ana died. And you can't keep losing these people that are supposed to be your snowball and your pressure heroes. I will say, the getting the kill on Void was a huge hero play from Jerex. Stood on the high ground that whole time when he was low HP, low mana. Managed to get a silence off on Void right before the jump. Without that, Void gets out and that is even more of a disaster. S4 has his blink at least. I was actually going to bring that up earlier because of his struggle especially. Seven deaths now in this game. Does he... We've actually seen a bit of drums coming out from Pet Riders in general. And I was kind of wondering if maybe there's a way the better choice and get in those stats. But he still goes straight into the blink. No, this is what I want to see. You go drums if you're ahead, because you can pressure your lane, you can just walk in with Firefly. We got a smoke, though. Trying to use that blink. Smoke on in. Conco, it's going to be the target. A, so cop of the Searing Chains, puts her up the ulti. Gets taken out, though, in response. Levin, no Ravage to be used. Just going to simply be that tanky presence once again. And Rum is applied on top of that from the Ghost Ship, and now tied on her. He's having a run. And you don't want to commit too much, though. They kill the Courier in the meantime. There's no items on it. Now tied on her doing his Bristleback impression right here. Keep his back turned. Marana. Arrow hit the familiar, I believe, so I should have taken up the fly, I guess. But again, Titan, you really can't commit too much to kill this hero. So they're, they're just going to back it off. Yeah, you're totally fine walking away from him. No Tail's farming. You won a team fight. That, that's a huge boon for you if you're OG. And honestly, just came on the back of a very quick initiation. That was nice. A blast hit four, but without LGD being set up or having Ravage to reset, it definitely is looked okay there for OG. And that's going to be the rest of these fights. If they can sneak fights in around the Chronosphere and Ravage cooldown, we could see more fights like that, where they get a quick initiation and they, they take the lead early on. Yeah, but man, if Ravage was up there, totally different fight. <clears throat> well, it is up now, so again, it goes back. If you're OG, be careful of the fights that you look to pick right here. In fact, Smoke Ink. Ooh, I want to say that might have been seen by this ward here of OG. Yeah, they actually scanned them out, so they know for sure. Nice Tucker's still... He's going to scout them, and he's going to go for the TP. Oh, beautiful play by Jerax. You know that that was on purpose right there, for sure. Oh, that axe was so close. It was. I mean, that was a ballsy move as well, but... They got the smoke and the TP out. So, well played. Gets out in time. Obviously, Murata has the axe. He's actually working on a use as well. Yeah, so he's game. probably going to go the full caster build. You go Yules, then Blink, and potentially E-Blade if he wants to finish it all out. Like, from there, you go Utility. It's Lincolns or E-Blade or something along those lines. Anna? What does Anna go this game? We, we saw the Radiance earlier, but he doesn't have that queued up anymore. So, you talked about the Maelstrom. That's why it just needs that yeah, kind yeah. of split push presence. Yeah, it's it needs to be a pushing item, and then it probably needs to be... Your goal is just to not get caught and keep uh, lane pressure up, so... Whatever items are going to help him do that this game. Lincoln's is normally a, an Ember pickup after he gets his first wave clear item, but it just looks really bad this game. It blocks almost yeah. nothing useful. The only thing it would save you from is X, which is pretty important, but... Yeah, I'm definitely curious. He took the Radiance off as quick. Moonlight Shadows, Chronosphere opener with the AA Ice Blast. Equals a dead Ember Spirit. That was all Moonlight Shadows right there. I that love seeing that from Ronos. Yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been bad. But, but it didn't. That's the thing. But it did. It didn't. But I, I love seeing Marana ultis use like that, just aggressive. You know, getting mm -hmm. ganks with it rather than always defensive to save teammates or whatever. Uh, absolutely. A very fortuitous DD rune is going to turn into a quick rush on here for LGD. Oh, what is Jerex at play? Oh, the Ravage going off. Wow, that was a very defensive Ravage. Can they even hold this tower against no Tail With no Ravage, no Chrono? I don't think so. No, Ice Blast even on top of that. Oh, it's coming in. Yeah, no, just too late. So they save the, uh, save the tower at least. Barely. Yeah, they'll probably just deny it at this point. Yep. But uh, that means he's going to go bottom and keep farming. He's going to hunt her in the night away. It's a fun hero. That did get nerfed this last patch, but still a powerful tool. The mana cost, I believe, was increased. Not mistaken. Uh, cooldown, too. Or cooldown was decreased? Okay. Or increased. Okay. 
Yeah, hero that needed nerfs, I think it's safe to say. All of his mana costs went up because he got an int nerf. He got Tomer. Okay. Books, face of Void. Locked down somewhat. The last of the top off the job. The rum comes out though. He actually time walks. about time dilation pop there. Play defensive with this. No Chronosphere just yet. Yeah, they committed oh, everything on an Aegis Void there. That was weird. And they don't even get it. And again, there's ulti cooldowns that are now coming up here for LGD. So it does buy more space and time for Meepo. That's definitely a positive. So he has his hex done on Meepo. We saw him get out with that earlier. He has a Shadow Blade queued up. I, I, I mean, I'm guessing he's just assuming if they jump on me, I'm dead. So I want to be the one to <laughs> jump on them, which is why this hex is there, so we can just snap hex the void and stop a chrono. If he goes to Shadow Blade too, this is going to be hilarious. This will be the most aggressive Meepo build I think I've ever seen. Yeah, that's that's the unique item on the hero. By the way, he caught up. He's top of net worth now. <laughs> I mean, it's Meepo, yeah. You'd almost be, you know, not uh, not looking good for OG if that wasn't the case, right? Like, you need that to be happening. True. Sure. Good chance here. Now, for it's, anyone who's I'm watched a lot of... Uh... Ooh, yeah, yeah, Moonlight Shadows. He's gonna cut us for the one Meepo. Oh, no. Ice Blast comes out. That's a dead Meepo for sure. They cannot save it. Moonlight Shadows again. It's just too expensive. Late in the game, you have Night Soccer Eggs and Gem. That'll really help curb some of that aggression, but... OG's still in the development phase. They need to get another item or two. But I'm still pushing the base already. Yeah, it's tier 3 tower taking some good damage. So they're going to take the tier 2 bottom. They do have ultis ready to go. Hype, of course, has been on a tide. He also has that block now. On it. Thrown up by the Yules of Murana. The arrow on top of that. Do they have enough lockdown following, though? Doesn't seem like it. When they extra back to bottom, she That's can't even come okay. back. I was wondering, yeah, that was like, wait, you glimpse? What? <laughs> but yeah, they no, actually extra. They extra, they extra hoping she could just push him off. And it, it did. He totally backed up. But he is committed yeah. to the Radiance now. Recipe is purchased about a thousand gold away from that relic. Okay, so has that just around the corner, and that with the evasion kicking in, that's, that'll be nice. <laughs> nice to have here. Face this void, though. He's going to lead the way, pushing uh, the middle. Tier 2 tower now, and you also have the BKB queued up. Dotil's going straight for this tier 3. He wants to make it so if they threaten Rax, he's doing the same. Yeah, he's got one Meeple down bottom. The rest are up top. Visage giving him information as well. Visage, by the way, is working on a pipe himself to go with drums that he picked up. <clears throat> oh, man. If Notil gets this pick on Void with the way he's positioned, I'm going to laugh. He's Shadow Amuleted, not Shadow Bladed. Missed chance, sorry. Yeah, he's having to stand here right here. And they're not going to find him, of course, so... <laughs> taking advantage of the item. This is just bizarre. I mean, I guess he doesn't really need the main Meepo to farm. It doesn't change his farm that much. So maybe he's just trying to keep this in position so if his lane gets pushed, he can cut one wave real quick and uh, just port all the other Meepos away. Dyer's bottom tower. Under That's how she's gonna win this game, though. Weird. It's yeah. it's you got him, Ember Spirit, you got Visage, even really didn't even mention a lot, but that's another hero that could definitely do that more and more throughout the game. So from that perspective, it makes sense. Again, they they, do, they don't want to team fight Elsa. This is a very deadly team fight side here on LGD. In fact, Titan reports bought him. Oh, you, you know, it's like, do I do I try something here? But without more coming, in fact, they came into the shrine area. They're going to catch Fly. X marks a spot, going to bring him right back. Gush of Fly. And they do catch Visage, at least. Very dead bird hero. This is just... It's a weird game, right? Because LGD's win conditions are very blatant. You press R on a bunch of heroes. Ooh, Void's going to find No-Tail here. He finds the one Meepo. Ice Blast on top. And just like before, we've seen that well, time and time again here against No-Tail and that Meepo. You'll set your... Throws Bat Rudder in the air, brings him on back with the X. And he's just trying to fly on the ledge right there to survive. It's not going to work, though. Gunk himself, the rope coming out. Not in time. He does go down, but they get the kill on it. And that is four heroes dead just like that. And it may be a fifth for the complete genocide right here in favor of LGD. It is a hatcher coming out for Marana. 26 minutes into the game. Everyone dead on the side of OG. Yeah, 
and thus the game starts to look insanely bleak. When you're getting shut down this hard, whenever you try to make a move, the, the splitting idea doesn't work very well. The, they've gotten to the point now where it only takes Chronosphere plus a ult to kill off Meepo or Ana, and once you hit that point, you know you're good to go. Because then you don't need Ravage and Chrono to fight. You know one or the other is fine. And that's actually the exact point OG couldn't get to. Once <coughs> once Snowtail's dying to just one of those ults, the mm -hmm. game gets really hard. Nearly 10,000 yeah, with lead for LGD. 10,000 experience lead right now in their favor. Marana. What does she have coming up? A Lincoln. So, yeah, this is definitely not a right-click battle build, Marana. This is more of the... You know, ganking presence. Kill you quickly, I guess, <laughs> you could say. Wherever you yeah, want to put it, but... the joke that I heard this fall with uh, Budget Quap was what everyone was calling it. Budget Quap, okay. Because you just... You, usually they'd buy a Blink Dagger, Blink in, Star Storm, and Leap Out. Hotel, oh, Ravage bottom again. lane, and if he dies again right here, he's going to. That, that's what you are just talking about. They use a Chronosphere earlier. He's back up. They're like, all right, we have another big ulti. Let's use Ravage. And he's dead for a minute with no buyback. I mean, they, they hit the breakpoint. Uh, that's it for LGD. They've gotten to the point they don't need all their ults to win a fight. And OG doesn't have options now. <clears throat> and Why? honestly, a lot of this comes back to just S4 dying that much. The Void got so much out of his lane, got farmed yeah. way too quickly to deal with. He still has a 10 second BKB to go as well. <clears throat> and yeah, the Chronosphere back up. So is he gonna use it right here? I feel like he could just go onto, a, onto Ana. Ana has a safety remnant though, so if he time walks into the Chrono, Ana could just run away okay. and get the Chrono. Yeah, no point. That's a uh, not so much for Batrider. That's an easier target. Almost escaped, but not far enough. He goes down. And Faceless just keeping his distance. Going for the tier three. Getting the objective. Ana gonna do as much as he can to try to keep them off, but that's not gonna work. Tier three goes down and LGD will play the very safe game as they run away together. Yeah, you lost no one and cracked the base. Now you got Shrines, you got Roche soon. The world opens up once you take a tier three. So, why is Meepo going this, what, the Silver Edge? Like, what? what's the high priority here with Silver Edge? The break? He is it realizes he has to be the one to initiate. If if he's not going on Void, the team fight's already over. The, they're yeah. just dead. It also lets him put one of his Meepos into a weird position, like he was kind of trying to do top lane. I think their their endgame goal is, now that the Radiance is up on Ember, if he splits a lane into kind of the danger zone, No-Tail can just Shadow Blade up to that wave, poof everybody in, and then try to take a tier 3. <clears throat> oh no, Night Stalker is sitting here. Uh-oh. You gonna pass or anything? No. Good job by Jerex reacting there. and No-Tail oh, snuck Roche. Yeah, that's It was an almost sneaky. instant respawn. That's that's definitely a, a way to get back in this if you're OG. At least uh, getting him the Aegis to stay alive. Well, resurrect even. And against this lineup from LGD, if you don't sneak a Roche like that, you can't ever expect to have another one. Because if you get caught in the pit, everyone's dead. Like that, that LGD lineup is probably one of the best Roche lineups I've ever seen it fighting around the pit. So OG yeah. really needs to use this Aegis because it's probably the only Aegis they're going to see this game. So that Silver Edge, the purpose is here for Notel. He almost has it finished. <clears throat> Coming out. Anna, what, what is he going for next after the Radiance? It's going to be Yules. She has enough, or just about there for it, but of course, buyback is of concern too. Keep that in mind. On the other side, Faceless Void. An AC is coming along. Poor attack speed for him. Happening in the Lincolns has been finished on Marana as well. What does Tide even have? Tide went the forest down the up, and now he has a Lotus Orb coming. Yeah. Tide is super tanky. And there is a big pickup here. Yao actually purchased a gem for the Marana. That's going to be huge in just shutting down what OG is able to see on the map. Then whenever anyone's not showing from LGD, No Tail's going to be scared to split. That's oh. not here. The Axe is finished. I love this smoke from LGD. It's so good. gonna go right in. <laughs> they, they have that ward in the base. Oh, that force staff. He gets hit by the ice blast. He's gonna cut his doesn't even need it. He's a back up. He gets a cut on the left. Here we go. Poof. So it pops a BKB and no tells jumping into his death. Chronos as soon as he comes up. I'm sure. And oh, or Ravage. Yeah, that works too. It's a Chronosphere and also catches 
The back lines, they're gonna go for the ragtail. There's a buyback on the happy. And the Moonlight Shadow's activated by Marana right there. Marana's going in, Hotel. He's looking for a target, they ping him out. Throws out some nets, but Marana putting the damage in, and Hotel poops on it with the others. But Ami jumps back in on Faceless Boy. Marana's in the air with Gil Scepter. Some Kunkka still alive, there's some kicking in. But they also kill Faceless Boy. Nice job with the fire revenue, and the burst coming out. And uh, uh, Notail, but he actually gets picked off in the back lines. And is not trying to live as the only core right now for his team. Somnus, Marana will die in the midst of it. Anna's staying alive this whole time. Gil Scepter throwing up in the air again. The slide of fists, and the AA goes down as well. And now it's just 11 all of a sudden. The raid boss is going alive. And they're going to take him out of killing spree for Ember Spirit. The fact that he lived throughout all that. I mean, it was a dieback on Meepo, but he wants to force buyback. He bought stop already. He didn't put a safety remnant back or anything. He's like, let's go buyback if you want me. We're going to force it at least out of Marana here, I would assume. And no they did pass the cheese over. So he, he does have that. So you, you, don't, you did not want to give up a free tier 3 here for LG. I mean, Kunk has been yeah. one. Yeah, Kunk can probably hold it. Yeah. Hey, Ace up at 15 and he will have an Ice Blast as well. So. You just you nuked the wave, honestly. I don't think that's going to be able to push this enough. Not the best seed here. And that's showing right here. So, slide a fist and... He jets on out of there, so that will be the end of the, the attempt by Anna. So with that, especially yeah, not getting the tier three, you know. Now to be fair, okay, they didn't get the melee axe. I thought they did for a second, but they did actually yeah. fall back before they did. Yeah, they got pushed off of that, and Ember was not on buyback gold for all that, so he got a ton of gold there from all those kills. But No Tail's item progression is done. I mean, he bought back not even close to the Silver Edge now, and trying to play Meepo at 33 minutes without boots of travel feels awful. You can't relocate yourself very easily. You're very committed to the main Meepo. It, it just plays like a totally different hero. Mm -hmm. Which, to be fair, Notel's always kind of favored this style, where he plays like a 4 plus 1 kind of thing. Whereas, uh, like, his secondary Meepos aren't heroes. They're just assets to his main one. Compared <laughs> to, say, Abed, who plays it like literally five different heroes. That the whole micro strat, yeah. Yeah, he's nuts. It's uh, impressive to watch it, but I have noticed that uh, with... But I think that also kind of goes to the, again, they drafted the people in this lineup, to be fair, so it's not like caught them off guard, but this is a very difficult team. Have uh, Meepo be extra effective it seems like uh, all well, the AOE lockdowns they have. If your bat rider wasn't broke, you get the jump on a lot of these fights. Like, they wanted to be blink lassoing people at 13, 14 minutes. And in reality, they were getting shoved in so hard, the bat rider still didn't have his blink till like 1830. It was just... That lane crumbling lost their entire strategy, and they had to kind of fall back. Well, it's an 8,000 over 3 for LGD. Again, there's definitely still plenty of game left. This move is over, and you see the racks obviously healing on up. So, I that there's not even any racks destroyed for LGD. Just definitely a sign of that. I'm gonna, what does he have now? He uh, almost has the Lincolns finished for next year. The ultis are ready. Ravage as well as the Chronosphere. Yeah, and the Lincoln Street is super hard. All the prices let him split a little better against Punko. Tall. Oh. Rana just leaps in there aggressively for the attack speed. A lot of attacks. He did the fortification use and kill me. You can see no toes behind with the Meepos trying to creep out here. So smart on his part for sure. Yeah, but you can't have Midwave crashing in at the same no. time. Gets rid of the back door protection. It was so close. Oh, S4 was looking for a target. He missed it, and now he's in trouble. X marks the spot. Gonna fall right back without a gush on top of him, and for very likely gonna fall. Chronosphere held off. They get the melee racks, got what they came for. And OG, it pretty much says lost cost right there. So yeah, it's understandable that they chose not to really initiate there. And yeah, Notel actually got a creep wave to this tier two, so he is able to hit it. But gonna have to abort. Maybe they look for something on the backside here, but I just don't know what they can actually kill without all dying to these ults. <laughs> oh boy, the chase is on. Gotta run him down here. Ice blasting for the team to dig him, and they are gonna stop it. X is really good at stopping the TPs. Yes, they the gem as well. Do they? Do they see it? Yeah, they do. They pick it up. So Night Stalker is dead for another 40 seconds. Honestly, still trying his best to chip away at this tier 3. 
you almost has it actually, but Levin gets there in time to once again sort of off. But the split post rat Dota is definitely the strategy, especially the whole King for OG. And you can't forget about Visage too. Visage almost has his axe. In fact, there you go. His axe is finished. And now it's a third familiar coming out. And that's Wait, something like, that's a little toy one too. Yeah, he's definitely farmed. Very, very farmed for support in this game. But the birds don't do anything when you're this far behind. You can cut a couple creep waves with them. If a lane gets to barracks, you can put some pressure on buildings. But it's one of those things you really wanted to be break even or or feeling like you had some control over the pace. And they definitely don't. Oh, no, it's out here. <clears throat> Finally, the silver edge is finished. So, how's that to work with now? Okay, somewhat of a unique build. Where's just that right? It was kind of fun. It just seems so much cleaner than full ground. Yeah. As for, uh, Buck is definitely not something we've seen before, OG. Exactly. But not this game. Playing the Bat Rider here. Stuck with what you got. So, Dugdale push out the full blade and Roshan is up there. OG will get away over there. Definitely not going to be stopped in matter of, uh, Getting the kill and getting out. AC is now finally finished on faces as well. So he's going to take the agents here. Yeah, I would imagine so. And Bloodthorn queued up next. So that, that'll make life just miserable. In reality, I would say this game's looking pretty dumb and dusted for LGD, but we saw G uh, take a game off IG yeah. earlier in a very similar game state. That's true. That definitely is true. It, it was uh, as a result of a throw, but. Again, in games that, that had those tone backs that will play part of it. In fact, OG finding a couple of heroes by themselves. One of them is tied, to be fair, and that's not the easiest to kill as we keep stressing. And like Shadow's activated, Meeple's going, and he wants a skill nonetheless, so he's going to kind of keep something out at least. Dropping Half Life got the break effect up, so that does help, but again, the Moonlight Shadow's active, and they just have to retreat. Awkward. Just yeah. so awkward. They got tied to half, but nowhere close to actually finishing him. All right, just going to make the way towards the top lane. They already got the bottom back to quick taking care of the, the melee at least. Going to pressure the top lane. Meepo split push in the bottom as, as expected, but waiting for those ultis to come out. Time dilation popped. Amber Spirit has that flame guard up. Keeping his distance, though, that with the Radiant Spurn. And they are going to hex up the Faceless Void. Actually, the Spirit comes off the side. Another fight going out, but this Meepo's definitely going to die. He's dead for 90 seconds over here. Kunkka surviving, out comes the Burbage, and now Ember Spirit in trouble. Ember Spirit will barely survive, but not for long. Maybe Slide of Fist get out with a remnant. Yes, he does act to alive in the long run. His part is for it up. He will fall by that kid, Freddy. Not going to use right away, though. Again, though, Meepo, he's just having this rough time in these fights. All right, look right below the top racks. Click on the effigy. It seems scarily accurate. Trying to say no. <laughs> okay. He's trying, man. He's trying. Did not the best for the study before. The range rack's gonna fall first. Going for the melee now. They did get the buyback. Of course, on S4. Faces boy doesn't care about anything else. He's has the Aegis as well. Worst case scenario, S4 goes down for the dieback. And that could be the beginning of the end in favor of LGD. They're gonna make their way to the mid lane and try to help clean out for Mega Creep trying to get Rand doing everything that he can to stay alive. And keep his team still in. I mean, he does play damage. The Ice Blast comes out, though. You do see Faces Boy getting low, but again, even if he does die, the Ace will be back up. And in the slide of Fist, he's getting done after he fall. He flies back immediately, but he's the only one alive currently. Nice Ducker will reserve in a couple of seconds. Another Searing Chain use. And they finally take out the Faceless, but that just means full life and full mana. It's almost as if he wanted. This is going to be a dieback again if he goes down right here. Slide of Fist bouncing around constantly. And he will actually stay alive in the long run again, but now it's no tell, he's back. Here comes the PKB though, from Faces Void. Conus in 10 seconds, that's how long this fight lasted. No tell again, it's gonna get bursted down. Not a friendly Meepo game. That's proven to be the case. And GG's called, OG's 0-2 in the group stages. LGD, they'll go to 2-0. Uh, well, start to win this tournament. It's just... S4, man, that was, that was a brutal start.
I would just 